Let's welcome God's servant to minister to us with the topic empower hallelujah and be ready Amen. to be empowered and what a great joy to see you once again apostle thank dr you. joshua thank you so much it's such a a privilege and a blessing again to be with you tonight sorry for the late start but technology was trying to prevent us from from connecting but god is an overcomer and we're more than overcomers praise Amen. god in christ jesus so folk tonight Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Please be comfortable. Please sit, take your notebook, take your Bible. I want you to take some notes. I want you to listen. And as God speaks to your spirit, speaks to your heart tonight, I want you to write down the things that God reveals to you by his spirit, because the power of God wants to empower you. The power of God, the holiness of God wants to empower you tonight. So Dr. Joshua, Thank you, thank you once again for all the broadcasting that you're doing, all the commitment to the to the 40 days of fasting and praying and standing together in the gap. We love you and appreciate you and just so honor you in the Lord. And may God continue to pour out his grace, his strength, his mercy, and the fullness of his kingdom upon you and upon the ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, God servant, and continue to pray for us and please minister to us and we are ready to receive the word from Amen. God. Let us Amen. pray. Let us pray together, folks. Let's let's trust God. Father, tonight we just want to bless you. Thank you for in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you for dying. Thank you for destroying the works of the devil so that we don't have to try and attempt it by living by the law, but we can live under the grace of God, the power of God, because of the fullness of Christ and what you've done. We just want to acknowledge you tonight as Lord of all, King of kings, Lord of all. Thank you, Father God, tonight for your blessing. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch your word, bless your word, empower your word to us, Father, that we may be the sons and daughters of righteousness enthroned in Christ Jesus to sit in heavenly places with you. We praise you, we honor you, and we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's good to be together. It's good to be on online together. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share this broadcast. When you receive it, please Take it, share it with as many as you can. Please tell everybody about this channel and, and what Dr. Joshua Dong is doing and get some people to be committed to watching the rest of these broadcasts for the end, for the rest of the days in our 40 days of prayer, fasting, and standing in the gap. We're standing in the gap for you. We're standing in the gap for your nation. We're standing in the gap for the body of Christ, wherever you're situated, because we love you, we care for you, and we bless you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you. Let's get into the word tonight. The title of tonight's session is Empowered. Now, we often know that word, but we don't understand sometimes the significance of what God means by that word. So I want to start tonight, and, and it's an instruction. It's a godly instruction. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, God says to us through, through the, the teaching of Apostle Paul, he says, do not be conformed to this world. It's an instruction. It's not a nice to have if we want to believe it. God says through the Apostle Paul, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, totally changed and renewed through firstly the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is good, acceptable in the perfect will of God. You see, many people get their power from something. Everybody has to get power from something, someone, or whatever. Now, when we look at a torch, if we take a normal torch, and I'm talking about in the old, it was powered by batteries. If you didn't put batteries in the torch, although it was a beautiful torch, although it looked lacquer and it was shiny and it was hard, and, and it wouldn't produce light unless you put the batteries in. And the batteries gave it power. Now, you see, the torch shone bright when the batteries were at their freshest. 
as the batteries got lower in their charge, the light that came out of the torch got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it goes out because the batteries are flat. And you and I tonight, we need to know, and I'm asking the question, where or from whence do we draw our power? Now, when I talk about power, what empowers us? What infills us to give us the charge or the power that we need? Now, I'm going to say tonight there's three types of power. There's, and I'm going to start with two negative ones and go to the third one, which is God. The first one is people power. Now, in people power, people like politicians. People elect politicians to an office. And because the politician has been elected by a group of people, and say it's a majority of people or a lot of people, he has a position of power because of people putting him there. But of himself, he has no power. He is only to the level or the degree to which he's been elected by the people. And that can't last because people's minds change. And today they like you, today they love you, and tomorrow they like somebody else more and you're gone. That's known as people power. People giving the person an office. The second type of power are those that have a position and they use their position to dominate or dictate over other people. Position power. If you're the owner of a company, you have the right to manage your company and run your company. The position of being a director gives you power. So you decide what you're going to call your company. You decide what color you're going to paint your building. You decide what type of product you're going to sell or whatever. You decide who you're going to employ. Your position as the leader or the, the director of that company gives you power. So another way of saying it, it empowers you. Then there's the type of power that God raises you up. God gives you your position and your authority. It's not from man. It doesn't come out of man. It doesn't come out of position. It comes out of the throne of God called the anointing. That's the power of God that I want to talk about empowering us tonight. Now, if you turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 60, arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This was a prophetic word in Isaiah talking about Jesus, the Messiah. Arise and shine. When did Jesus start his ministry? He started his ministry after he was baptized of John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And the Holy Spirit came upon him and symbolic of a dove, the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he was empowered with the Holy Spirit. And the minute he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, he began to do the work that his father had called him to do. He got empowered. Now, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, before he went to the River Jordan, he was the carpenter's son. His name was Jesus. But the minute the power of God came upon him, the minute the glory of God, the anointing of God came upon him, he received power from on high. He became empowered with the Holy Ghost. Now, if we look at Isaiah chapter 60, that's what it was prophesying. It said, hey, arise, 
So as he came up out of the water of baptism, he arose, praise God. That's why we need to get baptized. That's why we need to go into the waters of baptism, get cleansed, sealed, and delivered so that we can arise, just like Jesus, just like fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord, hallelujah, shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. He just got empowered supernaturally by the Spirit of God, and nations would come to the glory that was upon him, same as you and I, when we are born again and filled with the Spirit of God. You see, when we get empowered by the Spirit of God, nothing is impossible to you and I. Not because we become something special. Not because we have a position. Not because everybody else wants to promote us in our ministry. Promote us in life. Promote us in our social standing. No, it's because we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit that has come upon us. And look what happened in Isaiah 61 when that Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit had come upon Jesus and his baptism. Chapter 61 of Isaiah prophesied what would happen. It said, hey, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you because the Lord has anointed you to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are captive, and to open the prison doors to those that are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn and, and, and to preserve those who mourn in Zion to give to them beauty for ashes and oil for, of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. He, the Spirit of God, when it came upon Jesus, just like it did when it came upon the apostles in the, in the book of Acts, in the upper room, they were endowed, they were infilled, they were infused, they were empowered with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus began his ministry. Peter and John and the apostles in the upper room, when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, the very next chapter, they went out and Peter and John saw this blind, blind lame man, excuse me, at the pool of beautiful, the pool of, and, they, and the man said, listen, give me some alms. He was begging. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but that which empowers me, I give to you. You see, we can just use that word so we have a better understanding. That which infuses me, that which is inside of me, that came out upon me just yesterday in the day of Pentecost in the upper room, that same power. I lay hands on you right now. I speak, proclaim over you, and you shall be healed. You shall be raised. You shall walk. Just as he heard in Isaiah 61, he began to operate in the power now, remember, the apostles in Luke chapter 9, Jesus said to them, I give you power and authority. Go in my name and heal the sick, raise the dead, preach my gospel. You see, they had heard Jesus tell them that he gives them power and authority. Now, they had the promise. That was the promise. In Luke 9, Jesus has not yet died, crucified, ascended, and been enthroned to the kingdom of God. He hadn't yet taken over the rulership of the earth. It was the promise of power and authority. But the enactment of that power, the enactment of that authority was the day of Pentecost when they were empowered, infused, and enthroned with the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you and I tonight. And you and I, we need to understand that power, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now you see, church, if we don't understand that power, we'll still try and do it in our own strength. If we don't understand that power, 
We're going to try and do it with head knowledge or intellectual knowledge instead of trusting God. I love the young people as they serve God because the young people don't have all this fancy head knowledge, see? You take a seven, eight, nine-year-old that's filled with the Spirit of God and you tell them, listen, I want you to just go lay hands on, on uncle so-and-so or go lay hands on so-and-so and pray for them to be healed. They just go in simple obedience, put out their hand, reach up to that person and start a prayer and say, Jesus, heal them. They put their confidence in their faith, not in their intellectual property and knowledge. Many Christians, pastors and leaders included, are trying to minister from the empowerment of intellectual knowledge instead of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. What energizes you tonight? What is in the batteries that wants to put your light on tonight? Is it your own ability? Is it your own intellectual power? Is it the people that have voted you into office? Is it you that have taken an office and occupied an office? Or is it the power or the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that enables you and I to go and do the works that Jesus did and greater works than these? By Not by might, not by spirit, but by my power, saith the Lord, by my spirit. It's God's spirit. It's God's power that empowers us it in, injects us and enthuses us to walk in the dynamis of God. You see, church, tonight, many people want power. And they'll do whatever they can to get it, even if it's illegitimate power, even if it's the counterfeit they want it, because it makes them position power. Now, you see, now I'm great. Now I'm, now I'm smart. Now everybody wants something I've got, because they're running on position power instead of Holy Ghost power. God says he resists the proud, but gives gifts to the humble. When I rely on the Holy Spirit, I stay humble. When I realize it's not me that can do anything, but it's Jesus that does everything through the Holy Spirit in me, then I'm just the vessel. I was sharing in an earlier program today about, imagine, imagine uh, Dr. Joshua, you get this beautiful meal. And, it, you know, you take it and you cook the meal and it's beautiful. You don't leave the meal and run to the rubbish bin and look for the package. And you grab the package and you hug the package and you say, wow, well, thank you, cardboard box. Thank you for packaging this meal for me. Thank you for bringing this meal to the table. Oh, I just love you. And you take that box and you put it up on the, on, the, on the counter in the kitchen or in your living room to admire the box. That'd be a little dumb, right? Because we're paying attention to the package when you should be focusing on the content. Well, you see, we are just the package. Not to demean anybody, not to pull you down. You're important. You're, you're a blessing to God. We love you. But you and I are just the vessel. Know you not that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that was bought with a price. It's not about the package. It's about what's inside the box that makes it a good package. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. It don't make me smart. Doesn't make me better than the next guy. Doesn't make me above the next person. It just means that I am the package that gets the privilege of taking the Holy Spirit with me to a situation or a circumstance where I can open the door and let the power of God come out on that thing and empower that situation just as I'm empowered. Let me put it another way to you like this. If you understand the movement of air or the movement of fluid. So I want to talk about fluid dynamics. And listen, I'm not an engineer, so some of you engineers out there, don't shoot me down because I got my theory wrong about uh, dynamics and fluid dynamics or hydraulics. But what we need to understand, if you look at the wind, wind flows from high pressure to low pressure. If you put something in a bottle like a cool drink, a gassy cool drink, a, a, a fizzy drink, and you shake up that bottle and you get some pressure in that bottle. And the pressure in the bottle is greater than the pressure outside. 
When you open the lid of that bottle, the pressure pushes that liquid out because it's stronger on the inside than it is on the outside. It flows and it has nothing to do with the bottle. It's everything to do with pressure. It moves from high pressure to low pressure. The wind, when the air heats up and it gets low pressure and there's heavier cloud or heavier air that's at high pressure, then the air moves from one high pressure system towards the low pressure system, and that's how we get wind. Now, here's, here's something that's so significant to Christians, and I hope this makes it easy for you to understand. When we are on low pressure, when our body is at low pressure, anything that's of a higher pressure than us will flow from it into us being the low pressure. But when we're at high pressure, that which is in us will flow out of us into our surrounds because we are at a higher pressure. Now let's talk about the anointing in the same text of, of, of fluid dynamics. When you don't have enough word in us, when we don't have enough prayer in us, when we don't have enough joy of the Lord in us, when we don't have enough anointing and Holy Ghost in us, we're at a state of low pressure. The minute we're at low pressure, anything on the outside in the world, anything rubbish of the world, any foreign influence, any demonic influence, any fleshly influence, anything like that that's of a higher pressure will transact towards us, into us, because we are at low pressure. And that's why people get filled with rubbish, because they were low pressure to the Spirit of God, and they got filled up with the rubbish. But if you and I are at high pressure, if you and I are filled to bursting like a pressure cooker, like a pressure vessel, if you open the top of a pressure cooker, there's a hissing of the air as the pressure inside wants to escape to the outside and levelize the pressure. Well, you and I are empowered with the presence, the pressure of the Holy Spirit as an example. And when we open our mouth, the high pressure in us called the Holy Ghost wants to flow on out of us and touch those on the outside of us who are lower in pressure than we are or lower in anointing than we are. Now, you can have flat batteries and the torch doesn't work, although it's got batteries in it. If the batteries are flat, the torch won't work. So we need charged batteries. In other words, their energy is at high pressure so that when you connect them in, they, the current, the electricity in those batteries begins to flow out of them. Tonight, as we talk about being empowered by God, it's not intellect. It's not, I can do more to study it and be approved. God will give me more. No, he says in his word that he gives to each and every one of us equally the power of God, the presence of God. It's what we do with it. It's how we use it that makes the difference. It's how we acknowledge the Spirit of God that makes the difference. What empowers us tonight? What fills us tonight? If we're filled with the nonsense of the world, if we're filled with the rubbish of the secular system we live in, we'll be low pressure. So we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to be empowered so that we can release that power. That's why the Bible says, church, out of our innermost belly will flow rivers of living water. Now, water can't flow out of us if we're dry. If there's no pressure in us, it can't flow out. We need to be pressurized, not under pressure as in negative, but we need to be filled, bursting at the seams, so that every time we open our mouth, every time we act, we act out of the presence or the fullness of the Spirit of God. Don't be transformed to this world. Don't be like the world and be conformed. Don't be like the world and be at low pressure of the spiritual life of Christ Jesus, but be infilled 
Firstly, by the renewing of our mind. Change our thinking. Change our concept. What empowers us? You know, I want to say this, church, and please, I'm just using an example, and I love you. But if you sit and watch rubbish on television 10 hours a day, there won't be much Holy Spirit powering you. But if you spend that same amount of time reading and praying, reading the Word of God, praying and trusting God, there'll be a lot more power in you. If I take my cell phone and I don't put it on charge, it won't work. To make this thing effective, I've got to keep it charged so that it can work. You and I today have got to stay charged in the Spirit of God so that we can be that light that God wants to shine. So I'll ask you a question again. What empowers us? Is it people putting us into position? Is it our own pride striving for recognition? Maybe it's the position that you've got because you own it, your own business or you have some wealth and that gives you position in society or does our position come from our empowerment of the spirit of god remember david when david was was anointed the brothers that were standing in the house with their father jesse they were all there ready to be crowned king or anointed for the kingdom for the kingship I can imagine the first brother, he's the first in line. He's the senior brother. Oh, it's got to be on him. The rest of you guys, you probably looked down the line and said, you guys can go and play. I got this. He didn't get the anointing because of his seniority and because of his position in the line. His brothers didn't say, hey, don't worry about us. He's the older brother. Anoint him. They didn't put him in the position of anointing by popular vote because they wanted it for themselves, see? And the second brother must have been delighted when the king moved from the first brother to the second brother. Well, he missed it. Well, it's my MG. It was me all along, guys. And he looked at the third brother. Well, he didn't get it either. And they went to the third brother. And every time the, the king went one down the line, I want to tell you the little brother at the end got more excited. Well, he's coming to me, see? He's coming to me. He was looking for the disqualification of others to give him power. Don't look to the disqualification of others for your power. Look to the Holy Spirit for your anointing. Well, we know what happened. Jesse and, and, and they, so got to the end of the line. And he looked at Jesse the father and said, is this all you got? Are these all the boys? And Jesse the father said, listen, man, there's one other. He's a youngster and he's out in the field looking after the sheep. The king said, bring him. And when he walked in, he said, this is the one. And he anointed David, the youngest. Now, understand something. In the time of the Jewish culture, the youngest was deliberately had roles and responsibility, and that was to look after the sheep. If you were the last born son, I want to tell you, they prayed for their mom and dad to have another child. So they were no longer the last born because the last born had all the responsibility of caring and looking after. And David, without position in the line, without recognition of his brothers, he was out in the field with the sheep. But he was the one that God anointed because he had the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. He had the empowerment of God. He had the favor of God. He didn't have his brother's uh, uh, permission or his brother's endorsement. He didn't have a position in the line that gave him the right of, of what was there. He was out in the field with the sheep, but he was the anointed. Man, those other brothers, I think they must have got a bit steamed up. They weren't chosen. And here's the little guy. The one that was least became much. See, it's about who and what empowers us. Tonight, does the Holy Spirit 
empower us? Or are we empowered by our own ambition? Are we empowered by the position we hold? Are we empowered by people that have put us there? Or are we totally dependent and reliant on the Holy Spirit for our empowerment? Look at Peter. He's in a boat. The storms are raging. The wind is blowing. The seeds are all up and down. And if you've lived at the coast, you'll understand when there's a stormy sea, there's those little white horses on top of the waves. It's rough, man. And he looked at Jesus and said, if it's you, bid me to come. What empowered him to come was his confidence in Jesus and the anointing that God, Jesus said, come. The anointing was on the word of God that said, come. And Peter acted on the word and he came and walked on the water. Wasn't because his position, wasn't because he was one of the chosen apostles. It was because of the word, the anointing on the word. And he stepped into the position of the anointing and he walked on the water. And the minute he took his eyes off the off Jesus and he took his eyes off the anointing, he sank and Jesus lifted him up. What anointed him to walk on water? The power of God. Not his own ability, not his own strength. Because you can try it tonight. You can go out and find a pond, find a river, and step off the bank and see if you can walk on water. You can't, and I'll tell you why you can't. Because God has not spoken a word for you to walk on that water. Because if he does speak a word, you will. But if he hasn't spoken a word, your position, your title, your, 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 your class, your status, nothing will make you walk on water. Unless Jesus empowers you, unless you're empowered by the Holy Spirit, you can't walk on water. Doesn't matter how rich you are, doesn't matter how famous you are, doesn't matter what, 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 what class or what, what dynasty you come out of, or, or what car you drive, or where you live, or how fancy your suit is, you'll sink just like the next guy, or just like the beggar in the street. You'll sink without the anointing to empower you to walk on that water. You're going to sink. I'm going to sink. But with the anointing, with the anointing, the power of God is in operation. And you'll walk on that water, just like Peter. All the prophets of Baal, with all their glamour and all their power, so-called, couldn't get fire down from heaven. Why? Because they weren't anointed, see? Elijah just called it down and said, fire come. Fire came. He was just the one prophet. There was 450 prophets of Baal and another 450 prophets. There was 900 prophets in the opposition camp. Can you imagine if you're in America, you play American football or whatever. Can you imagine there's one team on the other side of the field? There's 900 people on that team. And on this side of the field, there's just one man. And he still wins. Why? Because he's empowered, see? He's empowered by the Spirit of God. And you know, the Bible says nothing shall be impossible if you'll just believe. When we're empowered with faith and the Word of God and the commandment of God, nothing shall be impossible. We should only believe and nothing shall be impossible to us. What empowers you tonight? What empowers me tonight? It better be the power of the Holy Spirit. It better be the anointing of the Spirit of God. Otherwise, we're resting on the arm of flesh. We're resting in the arm of intellect. We're wrestling, resting in the power of people or the upliftment of people or the position we hold. Those things, my friend, will come to naught. They will pass away. But the anointing of God is forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Tonight, I ask you, trust God to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. Be empowered with the fire of God, the power and the passion of God. Not man's thing, not flesh, but the Spirit of God. May you be anointed tonight to be empowered for the work that God has called you to do. Because we can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own ability. We need to do it in the power of God's ability and God's anointing. God bless you tonight. Father, 
thank you for the church to be empowered by your spirit. Lord, no longer trying to do it on our own, no longer trying to strive and do it in our own position, power, or prominence, whatever. Lord, we want to lay it all down tonight and say, Father, come and empower us with your spirit. Empower us with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Empower us with kindness, goodness, and love, meekness, temperance, long-suffering. Empower us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Empower us, Lord, I pray tonight that we can do the works that you've called us to do, not because we are good or smart or better, but because you empower us, you enthuse us, and you pour into us the dynamis of God. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for your church. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. Dr. Joshua, thank you. I trust that's been a blessing to those who are listening and watching and those who will watch later on, that they'll understand empowerment of the Holy Spirit instead of the empowerment of flesh. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, God's servant, Apostle Derek, for that powerful message. And may all of us continue to seek the empowerment of